thinking of an object, designing it and printing it is now a thing of the present. It's not the past or the future anymore. This is the MakerBot replicated to fourth generation. We were lucky enough to get it from Rectron. I'm Tash and this is Tash Tech and today we're talking about this little printer right here. So we got it about a week ago and just like the, the MakerBot did the fifth generation, they gave it to us and they said you're going to have it for a week, do whatever you want with it and that's exactly what we did. This one we've had putting it through more paces than its, than the, than its older brother, the fifth generation. Um, we've had it for a little bit over a week now and we've been non-stop printing with it. As you can see we've done a lot more printing than we did on this, on this printer than we did on the fifth generation. Um, with the fifth generation we had a few issues, power issues and things like that that, that that hindered us. So the first thing I did was I strapped it onto a UPS and lo and behold Murphy's Law, we didn't have any power issues anyway. So with that being said, this is my favorite printer. I gotta tell you, it's, it, it stands out from its, from its fifth generation brother. First of all, because it's affordable, all right? The fifth generation is affordable, like I said, it's a good printer, but every time, like I said previously, every time somebody says, Tash, how do you, how do you get 3D printers? They're so expensive, they're not expensive. This thing is really affordable. I mean, think about it. We needed a hook the other day and I just designed it, 3D printed it. <laughs> Liz is laughing because the hook actually broke and now a little, our little uh, piece of art that was hanging on there just shattered on the floor but that was my fault because I designed a good hook but I left the infill as 10% instead of putting more infill in because it's going to be carrying weights that was my fault though the printer itself performed impeccably well all right um, that was on the fifth generation the fifth generation took us 14 hours to print a part like this one of the BB-8 um, pieces the round pieces this this generation the fourth generation did it in just under six hours that's because there's a difference in the way that it moves. This is a Cartesian type, so it's X, Y, Z, okay? The other ones, we look at delta printers, but this one has a set of belts that run up and down the X, Y, Z, the X carriage, and uh, the Y carriage, sorry, and then it has an extruder at a carriage that runs across the Y, or the X carriage. So you got the Y carriage and the X carriage that it runs across. All right. Um, the fifth generation is something I haven't seen before. It's pretty interesting and I immediately when I started printing I was, I was flabbergasted by the design. It has two motors that sit at the back of it and it has a belt that goes around the entire printer. Okay, a bearing that sits on the top right, comes back and then goes onto uh, the, the Y, the X carriage and then the same from the other side and they both tether at the extruder carriage, the hot end. And it's so cleverly designed because then one, if they both move in tandem in a certain direction, then tie belt the tensions and it moves forward or backwards. And then if one moves a little bit slower, then it moves the other direction. It's very clever. This is your, your normal type of uh, your printer. Super fast though, as you can see. Um, I liked it a lot more because it's so robust. Okay, there's no niggly smart extruder, um, which kind of comes off. I love the smart extruder, by the way. I love the clicking the thing off. But this one is a bit more, more robust. That was, that was just this first generation of smart extruders. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna see a fix in that. The other thing is it takes a normal, uh, it takes your normal filament size. So it's got these, these things on the back here, which will, you can, will, 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 will just splice a bit of that, that footage in. Just two racks on the, on the back side of the box that takes a normal filament roll. It's got two of them as well. So that gives me an indication that there is a, 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 a uh, option for a dual a dual hot end dual extruder. Um, I have seen them, but we haven't tested it on this on this MakerBot yet. The precision of it is amazing. It's just as good as the fifth generation. All right, the speed is very good, like I said, and the ro it's very robust. The bed leveling is ex is exceptionally well as well. And then you have to just point everything or boil everything down to the software, and it's that same tried and tested MakerBot software that they've been using this entire time and it's very good. We print with a raft the entire time. Right now we're doing a comparison between two different filament types. So we've already printed this wolf head here. This is from uh, some game. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not a big gamer. But um, it, it was a cool test for me, I thought. And you know, it has a bit of failing points here in terms of the, the, the support, but I hate printing with supports anyway. So uh, for me as a designer, I would think you should really stop Printed, printed without the need of support. Okay, but when, but you see that when, when it does print support, it's easy to remove. Okay, just slap it off there. And the rafts also are very easy to remove. Uh, the other thing is, 
I'm not really sure what else. I mean, we've we've kind of looked at this, and I've, like I said, we've been printing non-stop with this printer, and I haven't had any issues. I had one issue when we turned it on; it was giving us a weird error, and I rebooted it a couple of times, and I haven't had any, any issues since then. And you know, it's we've turned it off, we've turned it back on, we've we've done tons of time lapses with it, and. Uh, that's about it. I mean, the fifth, the fourth generation is very, very good. And I got to tell you, I've even asked Retron to give me a discount on it because they're not going to give it to me. But I've asked them to give me it because I love it. I want this printer. Out of all the printers I've tested, this is the really the most amazing printer I've ever used. Okay, make a make a bot, not make a not make a bot. It is the shiz. So we've had the fourth generation and now, like I said, we've been printing with the fourth generation for a while and then we've also printed with the fifth generation. Here's the difference between two parts that we printed. This is the fourth generation. This is the fifth generation. Liz is just throwing my stuff off my table here so we can get it in the other camera. So these are two, the fourth generation. Actually, all of this is fourth generation. This is the only fifth generation part we printed. There is your difference. And it looks really to be the same. It's very much the same, like I said. Um, you know, it's a few issues here and there, but that was because uh, when you, obviously, when you get a new fourth generation printer, and I've been, I had the MakerBot software set up to print on the fifth generation, I had to tweak the settings a little bit. It does change a lot of the things by itself, obviously, because of the splicing and the G code and things like that. The main thing I had to change was the, my filament size is 1.75 and I noticed on the fifth generation it was automatically set to 1.77 when I downloaded the software. That's a default setting of the filament size. I didn't know that. I thought, well, 1.75 is the, the filament size. I'll save it as 1.75. I printed a part and we had a lot of uh, like little bubbles and things on it. And um, I then changed it to 1.77 and it was perfect. I mean, nothing like that. Then the other issue I had was the temperature, it set it automatically, the MakerBot, when you select the fourth generation uh, MakerBot printer, it sets the temperature of the extrusion on PLA to two, 220 degrees. If you watch when it lays that raft, you'll see it will lay a piece and the piece will, the, or the, the plastic will actually bubble a little bit and then pop. And I always thought that was filament, but we have top grade filament right now. So what I did was I stopped the print, went in and adjusted that to 215 degrees like it has default on the MakerBot fifth generation. And I started to print again and that was solved. There was no issues. You don't want that, that filament bubbling. You want just the right temperature for it to extrude properly. Not too hot, not too cold. If it's too cold, it's going to extrude. Uh, you, you're going to get uh, jams and things like that and it's not going to extrude enough. And then or it's not going to extrude enough uh, in terms of width and the, the layout of it. If it's too hot, it's going to bubble and it's going to go over what you wanted. So if you want to print one millimeter of filament, you need to print one millimeter filament. If it's too hot, it's gonna print two millimeters because it's gonna it's gonna ooze out more. If it's too cold, it's gonna print less than one millimeter. All right. So your temperature is very. Spend a few minutes if you have the, the 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 capability. Spend a few minutes testing a little bit. I normally print a little box first, and I know that if I've designed the box and it's five centimeters by five centimeters, I print the box and I measure it. And if it's a little bit over, a little bit under, I tweak the settings and print it again. It's easier said than done on a, on a Cartesian printer, but imagine trying it on a Delta printer. That's even worse. So spend the time and you get perfect prints. And like I said, these MakerBot, uh, these BB-8 parts that we're printing are some of the most intricate pieces that I've ever printed in terms of uh, a job because they have to fit together almost perfectly. I don't want any, any funny niggly bits hanging around. Um, you know, these Iron Man and the Captain America here that we printed was also very difficult to print. But it, it handled it very well, but it's also how the, the, the model is designed. And the BB-8 model is designed very well, but you cannot have one, milli, one millimeter off here or there. It's just not going to work. And that's why we asked Rectron to give us this, and they jumped at the opportunity to have us play around with this. And thank you so much to Rectron for giving us this printer. Thank you to Verbatim as well for sponsoring the filament. Thanks, guys, for watching and uh, check out my social media. Um, let me know if you want me to try another printer next and we're gonna do that. And I'm building the BB-8 droid. We've also got the Predator coming up. And check out my Instagram, check out my Facebook, leave a comment below, hit that like button. I know some of you always hit that dislike and you give me some weird crap in the comments. That's cool, keep it coming, I love it. And yeah, thanks so much for watching.